So now we're 33 games into uh, the world of pass interference being reviewable. Yeah. How do you think it's gone so far, Dean? It's – I mean, I didn't, I didn't like the rule going in, and, and, and it's just – it's such a subjective call. And I feel like the rule went in to fix the Saints-Rams play. Correct. And so it's a safety net for that, but now we're getting involved in plays that aren't that play. The Dalvin Cook yeah, offensive the Dalvin pass Cook, interference like, call that, that, that wasn't called on the field. A flag was put down by replay. In replay. And, and, and it wasn't a challenge from a coach. No. It was a scoring play because all scoring would, plays would, are would reviewable. Would there have been an outcry had that call not been made? Had, no. Would there, no, there wouldn't. And I feel like we're, we're, we're loaded for bear and we're hunting mice right now. It just doesn't make any sense in terms of that, that obvious mistake. And look, it's not an easy call. I think it's shining a spotlight on pass interference, what is and what isn't. And uh, it's a one-year deal, so uh, I think if it continues the way it's going now, I don't know if it's going to make another year. Well, you know what coaches think and how they think, and the influence they have on on the membership that votes on this. Yeah. What What do you are, are you hearing anything right now, or what are you? Hearing? I think what the coaches want, and I think what they wanted back in March, was they wanted some form of a safety net. Yes. For all. Not just pass interference, but any type of obvious egregious mistake they wanted. We talk about a sky judge concept, you know, whatever that, whatever you want to call it. Right. That's what the coaches wanted. Where the competition committee landed was just in a small subset pass interference. So I think the coaches would probably want to see it expanded to other areas. No because, kidding. Because you could, you know, last year, right? We missed two false starts that led to touchdowns. Those those impact games. You can't fix that. But you can't fix a, uh, you know, Dalvin Cook maybe blocking three well, the yards thing down that the I field. Well, the thing that I would say is maybe you don't, you don't um, look for it unless it's asked to be looked for, right? And I understand sure. that there's the last two minutes that no coaches are allowed to ask for anything. But to me, as you pointed it, as you said moments ago – What'd you say? Loaded for bear, but you're hunting mice. Yeah, right. I just came up with that. By it's the just way, like we look, can trademark man, that. That we was can imp- go. By the way, know. that that was really pretty impressive. good. Like off the cuff, right it's off just, the yeah, dome. Not even, so yeah. so, but it was very appropriate. Um, and so, the question is: is what would be the fix? Because there does have to be no question a safety net. So what happened in the NFC Championship game never happens again no we- question and then i think that's the goal we've got to prevent that from happening again So how do we do that you know there's a couple of ways you could do it and and to me you know i always go back to to bill belichick and his suggestion years ago let the coaches we've got two challenges they're time that's they're tied to timeouts let us challenge whatever we want at any point during the game and i know as a coach i have to save my timeouts or save my challenges for that critical point at the end of the game that way you keep it limited and the coach can decide what is critical, what is important. Um, I think that's one way. You do end up sometimes teams take timeouts the right way and they're trying to get the ball back and they would be out of a timeout, out of timeouts late in the game. So that's why you you put the replay official in the last two minutes. But to give the replay official carte blanche on everything would be would be tough. Of course. But you know, Belichick making that suggestion, even though we could sit here and say, why not? Because it does sound like, why not, right? That yeah. does sound like something that could be done. The question then is, is what happens if the coach is out of exactly. timeouts or an, or out of challenges and the NFC Championship game yeah. loophole has a, a truck drive through it again? Yeah, See, and do, so do you give that. the league office or do you give the replay official – a a one a one off opportunity if the team is out of challenges that they could fix something but then it comes down to judgment what is egregious what it so there's there's no simple fix and this is something you know when I was at the league office we we contemplated I know the competition committee is is thinking about it now and uh, and and at some point we have to accept that it's not perfect and they're going to make mistakes at times. You just hope you can mitigate those mistakes and, and prevent them from happening you know, at the end of a, of, Again, of a close game. I think a scoring play, not the pass interference, you just remove it from the bucket of any time something's reviewed, everything's reviewable. Yeah. 
just not pass interference. Maybe we could start with that. Because, you know, I mean, that way what happened in Green Bay to Minnesota doesn't happen. But Pete Carroll can still say, hey, you missed that pass interference in Pittsburgh that we really need that first down yeah. for. Throws a challenge flag. The question is, though, is when he did get the flag put down by replay, they said, you're right, we should have called it in real time, and he gets the pass interference, that when then I'm, as a fan, seeing something similar happen in, say, Baltimore, and it doesn't get called, it's really confusing. And, and that's the subjectivity in this call. That's that's. Right. It's not... Remember, replay was put in for objective fact, the ball touching the ground, right. the, the the knee hitting the ground. Now it's... Well, is there contact before the ball arrived? Was that contact enough to restrict the receiver's ability to make a play on the ball? So it's very subjective, and it's hard to be truly consistent from game to game. So uh, in the few minutes I have left with you here in the Honda Insider Report with you, Dean, Dean Blandino, what about people who go in the other direction and say, just get rid of replay? What do you say to people it, say we're that. not we're not going to go back. I mean, we we knew. I mean, I was at the league office in 1999 when we put replay back in, and it, it was George Young, you know, who was who was the GM for the Giants for a long time and worked at the league office and a legend in the NFL. And he's the one that said it. He said, "Once we put this in, right. it's going to expand, and we'll never we'll never be able to bring it back." And I think people have ex- have accepted replay. I think overall, it's been good for the game. Imagine. Imagine a touchdown counting when it shouldn't have counted right. and having no ability to fix that. So I think it is good, but we just have to we have to manage it and balance between, you know, the obvious mistake and and the human element that because rules are they're written for officials to make decisions in real time. For more of the Rich Eisen show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download the Rich Eisen show app.